The identity of the Nephilim, giants mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, is a major mystery in the Bible. According to Courtney's tradition, they are cannibals with demonic fallen angels as their father and sinful human women as their mother. They roamed the earth allegedly for a long time and were destroyed by the flood around 200 BC. The Book of Enoch, a Jewish document, provides details of how angelic beings copulated sexual intercourse with human women and created a cosmic mess before the flood. St. Jude, one of the Twelve Apostles, wrote an epistle of St. Jude that directly quotes from the Book of Enoch. St. Peter also alludes to the fantastical events of the Book of Enoch, including the sexual encounters of fallen angels with human wicked women who gave birth to the Nephilim or giants. According to the Book of Enoch, the reason for Noah's flood is the reason God floods the entire earth and saves Noah, his wife, three sons, and their three wives. This belief is also found in the canonical Book of Wisdom, which is in Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant Bibles. The Book of Enoch tells the story of the fallen angels and the giants, who were sent by God to guide and instruct humanity. These angels, called Erin in Aramaic and Gregoroi in Greek, corrupt humanity by teaching evil things instead of good ones. Saint Paul the Apostle also held this belief and considered wisdom as part of his Bible. The Book of Enoch and Saint Peter's Second Peter depict the fallen angels as watchers who were supposed to be good teachers for humans. However, they were later identified with giants who God caused to fight and die off. The souls of these giants turned into lost souls, demonic spirits that haunted and tempted humans for the rest of time. Yahweh binds the 200 watchers who were supposed to be good tutors to Tartarus, the deepest dark part of the underworld. This term is not a Jewish word but a Greek concept and it is used in Greek mythology to describe Zeus, a sky god, sending the titans into a dungeon called Tartarus after 10 years of battle. St. Jude and St. Peter use the same concept in their second Peter, but in the first Enoch legend, the angels procreated mutant giants with human women who turned out to be warriors and cannibals. The Book of Enoch and St. Jude and St. Peter have assimilated or adapted the Titano Marchi legend, which is Zeus condemning the titans into a place called Tartarus into an Enoch legend about Yahweh condemning the 200 angelic watchers, or a Gregoroi into the deepest, darkest chains of Tartarus. In the first Enoch legend, the angels procreated mutant giants with human women, who turned out to be warriors and cannibals. The Book of Enoch, a biblical narrative, tells the story of Nephilim, or giants, who were created by the union of sinful women and fallen angelic watchers. The story is referred to in the Book of Sirach, which is found in Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Bibles, but not in Protestant Bibles. The Book of Enoch was lost until the 1700s, when 10 copies were discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The early Church Fathers, including St. Justin, St. Clement of Alexandria, Origen Tertullian, St. Irenaeus Athenagoras Commodionus, and St. Ambrose of Milan, taught that the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 were human, not angelic, ancestors of Seth, the son of Adam and Eve. These righteous men had intercourse with the evil daughters of men, who were the daughters of Cain. This led to the belief that the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 were indeed fallen guardian angels that copulated with evil human women. The legend of the Watchers in 1st Enoch may have been a Jewish adaptation of the Greek myth, explaining how Hellenistic Greek invaders became Gentile invaders into the Holy Land. This began happening with the Greeks from 312 BC, leading to the production of hybrid mudblood Greek pagan Jewish children and the need to destroy and drive out the Greeks through the Maccabean Revolt. There are three theories on the origins of the Book of Enoch.
Michael Heiser's theory suggests that the Book of Enoch is a historical event that influenced the development of Christianity. Other theories include the creation of the Book of Enoch by the Israelites and the creation of the Israelites as a nation. The Nephilim in Genesis, as interpreted by various scholars, are believed to be a hybrid race of human angels created by fallen guardian angels. They were violent and tyrannical, leading to their destruction by God in Genesis 6. Margaret Barker suggests that the Nephilim are symbolic representations of the wickedness and violence of the pre-flood world, explaining the destruction of God against evil. A more secular view suggests that the Nephilim were a race of ancient giants or large or tall people, possibly Neanderthals, who lived before the flood. However, their origin and nature remain a mystery, and their exact interpretation remains uncertain. The Catholic Church, led by St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas, interprets the Nephilim and other biblical legends as holy human men walking with God. They believe that before the flood of Noah, the sons of God were righteous humans, while the daughters of men were evil daughters of Cain. This led to moral corruption and decay of humanity, with children born from mixed unions with sinful mothers and righteous fathers. The Book of Enoch, lost during their time, was rediscovered in 1773 and translated into English for the first time in 1821. The publication of the first Aramaic fragments of First Enoch in the Dead Sea Scrolls changed the way theologians approached these ancient legends about fallen guardian angels copulating with females. Scholars now recognize that before Christ and in the early Christian period, the Nephilim were not considered angelic beings, but as holy human men walking with God. The video explores the belief that Genesis 6 was an inner breeding between fallen watcher angels and sinful women, creating hybrid giants that were wicked and led to the flood. St. Jude, St. Peter, and 2 Peter believed that this concept was the basis for the flood. They applied this teaching as a doctrinal paradigm for the lay people in their church during the apostolic era. Jude and Peter apply this concept to early Christians, arguing that false heretical teachers who were once part of the true apostolic church have fallen away from Christ and are teaching false doctrines and how to sin. They compare this analogy to angels appointed by God to guide humanity in the right way of living and church leaders who have fallen away from teaching false doctrines and seducing women. The text also questions whether St. Jude and St. Peter believe that the Book of Enoch is real and that the Watcher legend and the procreation of giants Nephilim are in their minds. If they met Jude or Peter and asked about the part in Genesis where the sons of God enter into the daughters of men, they would likely say that it was an ancient story or myth that apostles are using to make a contemporary application against heretics teaching false doctrine and seducing women in their churches. Consider the context in which these teachings are applied and to consider the potential implications of these teachings on the lives of early Christians.